for a week. All of us at this day. And allowing us to come to the house of prayer to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your divine presence. We thank you for the anointing which becomes of it yokes were destroyed. We thank you for every answered situation. Thank you for continuing to answer our prayers and showing yourself light. Surely you are the sovereign God. Father, we adore you. We worship you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that this day that you can feed us Feed us until we want more. Remember those that are out sick. We ask that you will continue to touch them. Remember those who wanted to get here but were hindered in some kind of way. We ask God that you will continue to move in their lives. Father, we say thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you for what you're going to do even more. We thank you, amen. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless your name again and again. Everybody in the house, amen. amen. Ahab, prepare thy chariot, and take thee down, 
that the rain stopped thee not, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the earth was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The Lord had a blessing through the reading of his word and sanctified in our hearts. You may be seated. You know the story very well. Israel's being ruled by a wicked king named Ahab. And he has not only led Israel away from God into idolatry, but he has also married to a witch named Jezebel. And together they led the children of Israel into deep rebellion and false worship. pays for us to be alert and staying anointed and connected because if you marry yourself up with the wrong person or the wrong people they will lead you into rebellion and false worship. Yes. Praise his name. So God raised up a prophet that would not be shaken and would not compromise and God sent him to confront this spirit of wickedness and false religion. Elijah confronted Ahab and the false prophets of Baal and called fire down from heaven. Now the people have repented and the false prophets have all been destroyed. But in our text, the prophet, the man of God, has prophesied the rain is coming. The drought is over. And he tells Ahab, don't worry. Be happy. The rain is on its way. So Ahab goes up to eat and drink. But Elijah goes away by himself. Along with his servants. And he throws himself down to the earth. And he begins to pray. And he sends his servants out to look toward the sea. To see if there's any evidence of a change coming. And to see if there's any sign of the rain coming. So a servant comes back with a bad report. With an empty report. Empty, yes. A negative report. Uh -huh. He comes back with nothing and re reports to the man of God there's nothing. There's nothing. Six times the servant leads the man of God <coughs> to wrestle with God while he scans the heavens for his time. And for any evidence that God has heard his prayer. Six times the report comes back the same. There is nothing. There was no mistaking. His words were clear. They were sharp. And they were to the point. There is nothing.
fact, the subject is where they said there is nothing. There is nothing. No doubt these words had an effect on Elijah. But a true man of faith is not shaken by what they see or don't see. All right. Instead of being discouraged and giving in and giving up, Elijah turns up the heat and he presses his request and he intensifies his prayer. And he takes the negative report as a challenge to the word of God. God told him to appear before Ahab and he would send the rain. So he stands on the word of God. And the Bible says he prayed fervently. Now fervently, fervently means white hot. <laughs> Finally, on the seventh time, the seventh time, yes. his servant returns with a side note. There's still nothing. But I saw a little cloud, the size of a man's hand rising up out of the sea. The poor servant was ready to hear those familiar words, go look again. But instead, Elijah jumps up off his knees and all right, all right. he sends his servant in a different direction with a new order and a new instruction. Yes. And he says, go tell Ahab to hitch up his chariot and get down off this mountain for there's a sound of the abundance of rain. Yes. There's a sound of a downpour. Yes. A deluge and an extremely heavy, hard rain. Yes. Have you all ever been in a heavy rain? Yes. I mean, when it really rains heavy, it makes you go somewhere and just be quiet. Yes. <laughs> just be quiet. Because it sounds kind of devastating. I'm talking about a real heavy rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the word of God. And this is the word of God put in my spirit and told me to prophesy to you. He said to prophesy to my people in the place where they said there is nothing shall come forth and abundance. I mean, we heard praise report where the advisor says the real estate business is slow and it's going to take some time to sell this house and property. But God said, God said, what God? It is already sold. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to, and I don't know what that means to you, but you do. Somebody has heard those words. There is nothing. Yes. Not once. Not twice. Not three times. Mm -hmm. But over and over and over again. There's nothing. There's no money. There's no hope. There's no way. There's no love. There's no chance. There's no change. There's nothing left. There's nothing that we can do. 
those words are meant to signify the end. In other words, you can quit praying now. You can quit confessing. Uh -huh. You can quit believing. All right. You can quit hoping. Mm -hmm. You can quit expecting. You can quit dreaming. And you can quit looking. And you can quit praising and quit marching. But I came to tell you, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit believing. Don't quit confessing God's word. Don't quit marching around the walls. Because in the same place where they said there's nothing shall come forth in abundance. Well, the whole church of the go crazy over that. Amen. They may mean your doctor, your banker, your lawyer, your husband, your wife, or they may mean your prodigals who have said to you, I'm never going to serve God, so quit wasting your time, quit praying for me. They may even be religious people around you who are telling you to give up on your dreams. They say there's nothing, it's never going to happen. They may be your circumstances that stand in total, absolute contradiction to your faith. But I remind you, it's always gets dark just before the dawn. Warfare surrounds the birth of a miracle. A woman never comes closer to dying than when she's given birth. And just before your breakthrough, you will fight your greatest yes. battle. Yes. Let me say it like this. Your abundance is just beyond nothing. Right. You say, I can't see anything. Oh. I don't feel anything. Right. I don't have any evidence. I may not have any evidence from a natural perspective, but I've right. got confidence. God's word is true. Yeah. Somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord. Yeah. You're in a perfect position for a miracle. Yes. Peter fished all night and caught nothing. But with one word from Jesus, he went from nothing to abundance. Yeah. He went from nothing to overflow. Yeah. He went from nothing to too much. He had to call his partners to bring their boat. And both boats were overloaded and began to sink. So someone needs to know today, it's closer than you think. Your miracle, your healing, your breakthrough. Now I know that we've been preaching for the last six months or more about breakthroughs just about every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. All right. And I know that the time is going to come very soon where you're going to be get a word that you're going to get teaching from the word of God. It's going to come very soon. But God wouldn't bring a message of breakthrough, All right. a breakthrough time after time if he did not mean it. Yes. Praise his name. Yes. He is trying to get you to believe God yes. and to believe his word. Yes. Can I get a witness today? Yes. It's not, it's not just because it's a popular thing to do to, to preach deliverance and to preach breakthrough. Come on, sir. God sees the situation in the church. Yes. He knows everybody's personal Everybody. situation. Yes. And God wants to encourage you to believe his word. Believe his word and to believe the prophet. Because the time is going to come when you will be right in the middle of your breakthrough. Hallelujah! 
praise his mighty name. So I know you can't see it, but God has been working in the dark. And God works in the night shift. <laughs> he does his best work in the night seasons yes, of your life. Yes, he does. Even when you can't trace his hands, you can trust his heart. Yes, and whether we can see it or not, all things work together for your good. Yes, to them that love God, yes. to them who are called according to his purpose. Yes. The good the bad and the ugly. Isaac was dwelling in the land stricken with famine. That means no rain, severe drought, no crops. It was a desolate place, a horrible condition. He thought to go to another place and look for better conditions, better environment, better weather, and better ground. But God said, no, stay here and sow your seed here where there's nothing. No doubt Isaac was criticized and ridiculed. No doubt they called him a fool for wasting his seed, sowing in a drought-stricken land. But Isaac obeyed the Lord and sowed his seed in that land where there was nothing. And there came forth in abundance. He reaped in the same year a hundredfold in the very same place. And I want to tell somebody who's looking for a better place, a better environment, a more favorable circumstance. I want to tell you Hold on. All right. God is going to bless you right where you are. Right oh yes, he's going to bless you right where you are. Right. In the place where they said there's nothing shall come forth in abundance. Right. I know it's hard to keep marching when there's no visible evidence of change. Yes, yes. And I know it's hard to keep tithing and sowing your seed when you're in a financial famine. And I know it's hard to praise God for healing when your body's wrecked with pain. And I know it's hard to stay positive when everything you see is negative. All right, all right. And I know it's hard to believe for the rain when you've been in a long drought season. And I know by the Spirit, I'm talking to some people who have been in a long drought season. Drought means scarcity, lack, deficiency, emptiness, dryness, water, shortage, water, need. It may be a spiritual drought. You haven't felt God in a long time and your spirit is dry and empty. It may be a drought in your finances. It may be a drought in your marriage. You're running on empty. You may feel like all of the love is gone. There's nothing left. It may be a drought in your health. You've been in a long, hard battle. And you're exhausted and worn out. And you don't feel like you can fight one more day. You're empty. But I came to declare to you today by the word of the Lord. The drought is breaking. There is a drought dusting, anointing in this place. I said there's a drought busting anointing in this place. Somebody needs to lift your hands right now and thank God that the drought is breaking. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And I've heard all the negative reports. I've heard all the discouraging words. I've heard all the dream killers and faith assassinators. And I've heard the dry bones walking about how to dry they are, how dry they are, how hopeless it is. And I've heard the weather report. No relief in sight. There's no rain in the forecast, Elijah. 
They say the drought continues, Elijah, but I'm like Elijah. Today, I'm tuned in to a different frequency, and I'm hearing heaven's forecast, and heaven's forecast, hallelujah. I said, I'm hearing heaven's forecast, and heaven's forecast is predicting heavy amounts, heavy amounts of rain. Heaven's forecast is predicting black flooding. You're in the warm areas today. Elijah standing in the place where he heard the words, there is nothing. Now turns around and says, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. In other words, it's already been released in the heavens. And it's on its way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Let me pause here and tell somebody. It's on its way. It's closer than you think. Heaven's radar has already located it. And it's in your county. And it's in your town. And it's in your neighborhood. It's coming down your road or street. And it's coming to your house. I don't know who I'm talking to today. God told me to prophesy to you. The drought is over. Hey! He's on our side. The anointing is changing your season right now. That yoke destroying burden removing anointing is in the house right now. The servant comes back to say. And he says, I don't know what this means, but I see a little cloud the size of a man's hand. Elijah knew what it meant. It meant my prayer has been heard. Hallelujah. Your prayer has been heard. The answer is on its way. God told me to tell somebody today, your prayer has been heard. The answer is on its way. Your prayers have not been in vain. And your praise has not been in vain. And your sowing has not been in vain. Your tithing has not been in vain. Your faithfulness and your obedience has not been in vain. God is getting ready to reward you. Blessings are coming your way. Abundance is coming your way. Do you hear it? Yes. Tell your neighbor, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Tell your other neighbor, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Hey! You may be standing in the middle of your desert, and you may be staring at nothing but sand, or you may be standing Praise his mighty name. You may be standing in the middle of the valley yes, of dry bones and nothing but death and desolation and emptiness and confusion all around you. But let me remind you that it was into Ezekiel's boneyard that the wind of God began to blow and put back together everything that had been stolen and everything that had been broken and raised up a mighty army. So let me say one more time. In the place where they said there is nothing shall come forth abundance. Hallelujah. The rain is falling. The wind is blowing. And the anointing is flowing. So who am I talking to today? How many will do something crazy today? 
and feel like Elijah and start acting like it's already done. Start praising him. Thank you. 